Hello everyone, and welcome to another news roundup with the best boys, Get Silly, it's and Sif Scott. And this time around, we have an interesting set of news, mostly with jumping platforms, baby. Yeah, that's right. We're going to be talking about a lot of news about multi-platform games and multi-platforming. So we're jumping around this time around. So Scott, why don't you start us off? So, let's first start off with, I guess, the more indie-ish news, but God of Protectors, the card of darkness, is now available on the Nintendo eShop in North America and in Europe. Yeah, this game was uh, created by one of my favorite guys, or worked on with guys, uh, Yujo Koshiro. Um, there's a game he worked on in the past that was available on Xbox Live Arcade, known as Protect Me Knight. It's the same characters from that game, but this time, instead of being a static uh, a static beat em up tower defense. This time you're on a cart doing the same thing. It's much more expansive than that game, which came out years ago. Uh, my only regret it's on the, it's on the Nintendo eShop, and I cannot pick it up anywhere else unless it's a Nintendo console. But yeah, that's just my age showing. Uh, musically, it's one, again, musical show, so it should be quite the banger. Uh, I actually was watching this on a stream the other day. I think it was Limited Run Games. Mm hmm. And it looked kind of cool. The graphic, the little like pixel graphics thing is also cool. All the characters seem like they uh, don't like clothes. <laughs> no, no. There's a there's, there's a buff ninja with no t-shirt, etc. Yeah, and each character has special attacks. This is a really fun game because I remember playing the original, like I said, the first game, Protect Me Night on Xbox Live Arcade. Just paying like five bucks to get it and I was unable to find it on other platforms. So to this day, if someone knows how to get it on the platform that'd be great so i guess i have to throw out the switch bucks to, to pick this up for sure but definitely it looks super fun to play with foot people of course yeah i was really i say engaged in just how much stuff is on the screen that you have to like protect through just, yeah which i think is kind of just fun to watch right it's a moving tower defense rather than the first game with static so definitely a huge improvement uh, looking forward to people speedrunning this game or just playthroughs of it in general or even people streaming it if you do you'll probably get my view so another thing that's going to get a lot of eyes on views is uh, scott I, I bet you heard about this no more heroes 3 is going multi-platform i did i'm actually i mean i can't say i'm very excited for no more heroes going multi-platform as much as the game itself as much as i am that it's just another game that's going multi-platform i'm just always happy when more games are having more availability on different platforms that's true i'm not the biggest fan of the no more heroes series but that's just because i haven't really played it well you you can get no more heroes one and two on steam as we speak and the and the latest of the, the latest travis strikes back which is like a solo game um i think no more heroes was plays very weird outside memes aside of you know working the wiimote um but it's a really fun action game. It's silly and it's over the top. Uh, definitely up your alley if you're into just wacky action games. Yeah, I mean, I love the humor of it. It's one of those games where I think the humor is by far one of my favorite things about the game. <laughs> That's true. I think, like, yeah, and I think this is kind of like the way this helps because No More Heroes, I think, is a game they wish to play, and it's, it's, it's also available on Steam, and knowing that it'll be available on future platforms is a really big deal. That's the way to, that's the way to go. And uh, speaking of multi-platform success stories, Scarlet Nexus uh, has been confirmed by Bandai Namco and all the sources that shipment and digital sales top over 1 million and player counts top 2 million. Scarlet Nexus is available on multiple platforms, and they have sold over a million plus units. That's exciting. I wasn't entirely sure what to think about Scarlet Nexus until I played the demo, and then I instantly just loved the combat of the game. Yeah, it's super cool, and it's always on sale on Steam. It's like it's like a six dollar game, but it's like always in like forty or twenty. So That's yeah, cool. I have it on Xbox and a PlayStation right now because I'm one of those people that just likes buying games for different platforms because it's <laughs> available there. I do the same for fighting games. I, I would buy like there's a currently a sale for King of Fighters 15, and I have a copy of it for PlayStation, uh, by PlayStation 4. But I will buy it on Steam on PlayStation. I'm sorry, buy it on my Steam for a PC because I do on my I'm on my PC more often. So. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. And I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's really good to see that because Scarlet was a new IP. A lot of people were iffy on it. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't Tails, put it that way. And it wasn't some arena yeah. anime fighter that people would clap <laughs> onto. 
with a big IP that's the only really selling point of the game. <laughs> right, well, well, we'll get to the only big IP selling part later, but yeah, it's just pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy on that front, and I think that... I think that, like, that's just a good thing, which shows that perhaps more games should probably go for the multi-platform route. Because I think that there are tons... When people say there's no XX on a market, that's just, like, caps you. I mean, there's certain situations where it's kind of true, like, uh, no offense to Xbox users, it's not a high RPG demand on it. But if your RPG is, like, something, let's say, like, Final Fantasy, you gotta put... You gotta try somewhere to put Final Fantasy on the, on the Microsoft platform. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, one, I'm on the boat that Microsoft needs to get more JRPGs in that level because they are severely lacking in that department on their consoles. Well, you can play a bunch of Western RPGs. Just kidding. Uh, but seriously, it's a, uh, it's, it is interesting that, and it shows how really good it is. Scarlet Nexus being on multiple platforms really helped them get their foot in the door and let other people try it when they can. So I think it's really great. Same thing with No More Heroes, like it being on Steam as well as being on Nintendo as well as other places so it's really good to hear yeah i think that's another reason why i'm bought on both platforms is i always try to really dig into jrpgs when they do arrive on xbox because i want to make sure that you know there is a market i believe of jrpgs on xbox i want to make sure that it gets it so that's one reason why i try to buy those on xbox when they do come in yeah Though I do feel like there's a whole bunch of things that lead to it, such as like certain, a lot of RPGs are a bit exclusive, and as well as the plant, all that stuff. But yeah, yeah. Speak, yeah, speaking of exclusivity, the big news we have for today is that the Sony Sony Group Corporation is investing a billion dollars in Epic Games, which will lead to Epic, which could correlate to them also investing Epic Games or yeah, so there's a lot of moving parts, especially because Epic Games right now is moving with so much because they have the Unreal Engine system. They're also partially working on like VR systems and metaverse stuff because that's another big thing that's going on. Right. And so the Sony investing this much money in Epic Games is also them trying to be like, we want also at like more access as well as we want to basically keep this going of unreal engine stuff right but that also means another sad thing is that we're gonna might get more like sony and epic games deals where we'll get like sony games only on epic games for like a year or two like what square's been doing for the last two years now right and so does like gearbox from you know 2k like yeah. it was yeah like i recently got bummed out recently uh like solar ash which is like i think it's like solar ash is the indie games looking forward to epic games are exclusive I'm like uh, eyes roll you know but i i think they as you said sony's investing in epic games for multiple reasons they're unreal engines there are other things and the, the idea of them having a um I would say a partnership to include their games on there it would be interesting to see because god of war and horizon zero dawn are playstation inclusive games that are on steam and i'd like to see what ha what are those numbers on for that let's see if the sales numbers are good for those games yeah i remember god of war had some pretty good sales but right. they didn't release anything officially but that's just because sony is in this weird i don't know vague area where they can't release their sales until like it hits a certain like milestone right right which means that it's it didn't hit the the thin milestone numbers we expected to do so yeah so either it didn't hit the big milestone they wanted or they just don't care enough to like give us the numbers it's just weird now how that's been like the past few years now with sony and both microsoft too where they don't really give us the numbers of like the of how much gets sold the right. only way that we get those numbers is from like the individual like third party developers or from like retail stores. Right, which makes me wonder, it's like, is the game is the gaming industry smaller than we intend to think about it? Or in some capacity that they have unreal or some gaming companies when they create AAA games of the types have insanely unrealistic goals. I mean, if we're Square Enix, we already know the answer to that one. Yes, they um it's it's not just a bus baby. If we don't have a trillion sales, this game is going to always under undersell. Right, like, which... We don't know where your expectations are, but we really think you need to, you know, be on the earth. Right, and it really does... If that And that's a mentality really does hurt gaming design in general because it shows that, like, there's no room or, uh, I would say, room or um, 
growth for other smaller games or cult classics. Like, as much as we could joke that Kane of Hearts and Final Fantasy sells, um, there's people like myself who love the Mana series and Dragon Quest, and people like yourself, Scott, who are a huge fan of the Chrono series. I mean, you you were the one screaming from the heavens Chrono Cross the moment it got announced. I'm so happy. I've been playing, like, I, I think that's one of the reasons why I haven't really been looking too much on my Twitter feed is because I've been too busy playing that game. Yeah. I'm still on my first run through, but that's also because I'm trying to do it without a guide, which is both a good and a bad idea. But when you go back to the PlayStation 1 era of tight games, <laughs> do it with a guide because they are really vague and really bad at telling you where you could go. True, true, true. And, um,. Yeah, and that's that's kind of the thing it is it's like it doesn't allow like other properties to flourish or see this way which can leave a title to like dust or deadville because i think that a lot of companies have a lot of great titles that can be reintroduced to be very popular like for example with the rpg flush that we had the last couple of years um i'm surprised that that suikoden is not people suikoden is not out for other people like i personally uh the suikoden the suikoden series i grew up playing my favorite suikoden game is three and five and I'm surprised yeah. that a lot of people don't know what they are. Even though there is Eurydice Chronicles that are out created by a developer that's coming out way, way in the future, it's just kind of a sad thing because these companies like, well, it didn't sell a million copies or 13 trillion, so it's a dead game. I'm like, I wouldn't think of it that way. Like, I would think of like any game that breaks above above even after you pay all the costs, whatever, is a success. At least that's just my mentality. I agree with that. And I don't think it helps that we have like the gaming community either because like. A game like Returnal, which has like sold over what 800,000 copies, yeah, on, on being a play PS5 exclusive of all things, and people are saying it's a flop because it didn't break a million, and it's just like, I don't think that's true. No, like I think that it's selling 800,000 copies and being a roguelike game, which are games are insanely difficult and very hard to get into, is a good thing. Yeah, I agree. I think that Returnal did a very well for its limited like very niche demographic as well as being like a ps5 exclusive right that's that's a double banger you're a ps5 exclusive and you're a roguelike type game because look scott you know i love roguelikes but you have any idea how hard it's to convince me to play this this genre any idea um considering you try to get me to play it a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah but on a very serious note, it's just like, yeah, I, I think this is very warped idea of success it affects gaming and it affects people. And it's like, well, this is nostalgia. It's throw for nostalgia points. Are you really introducing nostalgia? Or you really have this faith and success in it? Like, and that's the thing I, I feel that makes me upset. It's like, well, yeah, is it worth it? So I feel like um, back to the thing at hand, like we have to wait until Sony or some milestone number happens or some third party researcher finds the sales for God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn for Steam to, and then compare it to the console numbers that they probably released a while back uh, for us to realize was it successful and in my mind it's like that shouldn't be the concern it should be the concern of like how many people touching the game how many people positively talking about it how much people are engaging with it because I think that's like the most important thing about it. Like game engagement and game talking about it is, is a big deal. Like, for example, you know, so this is a small tangent before we end off the video, is that you guys know I'm a huge point and click guy. I love my, you know, Monkey Islands, my Grim Fandangos, I love my Black Wall, I love my Lamplight Cities and Shark Lights. I'm a huge point and click adventure guy. And the fact that Monkey, the Return of Monkey Island's coming back, there has been a resurgence in the internet. People talking about it, communities, people posting little tidbits about the original games, how they were made. Uh, there's been developers being re-interviewed and things like that. This engagement is good, not only for the future, or for the genre, for the genre in general, so people can try it out. So it's like, as long as the people are engaging in games like Chrono, uh, Chrono Cross and Chrono Trigger, or engaging in games like Suikoden, and you can explore the idea that perhaps we can stop making the these um, typical RPGs you make and try something out there that's weird, like the hundred start of destiny mechanic or multiple timelines in Chrono in Chrono Cross, which I'm surprised that very few will tackle that. It's such a cool concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love the time mechanics of the Chrono series and like the dimensional mechanics they bring in later. Yeah, and so I feel like through its efforts we should try to not look at games as, i mean sales are important but not 
put the emphasis on sales versus things that happen outside of it like you know people talking about it to the engagement to let's say that you make a new let's say make a new chrono cross game a brand brand new one but you see a surge a resurge of like people streaming the original and buying the original perhaps that's just as good as let's just say your new chrono cross game sells you sold the game for twenty dollars and you sold over uh, 600 700 000 copies but the original chrono cross you purchased that you made years ago that sold a million copies isn't that just as important that more people experience the original to play and then they, maybe later on to play a new one i mean time is time you know yeah and i think it's always good to have more people playing at least especially like games like chrono cross which i think was ex extremely underrated when it first came out but right. i think that well i already had my big spiel on that but i was one of those people but it overall, happens, i'm man. just happy to see people actually enjoying it again for the first time as well as again true true been and so many like uh reviews and stuff that i've read up where people are like i don't know why i didn't like this game i played it now and it's just like my favorite game ever now it's like you bet it is <laughs> bet it is. and i guess with that out of the way uh thank you guys for checking the video we're gonna wrap up the news that you if you guys uh, have somehow skipped to the end we talked about the greatest game of all time god of, uh, god of protectors the uh carter darkness the somewhat sequel to protect me night I worked by uh, Yusha Koshiro's company and other people, so it's, which is available on Nintendo eShop in North America and Europe. It is a, I would say, a tower defense game. You play 8 big pixel heroes to beat up ghosts and goblins and other creatures and things to protect the princess on a path. We talked about No More Heroes 3 going multi-platform, where No More Heroes 1 and 2 is available on Steam, so if you want to do a catch-up, you can pick it up there. We talked about Scarlet Nexus, uh, shipment and digital sales, Hitting over, hitting um, near one million, and the player count hitting two million, and it's a multi-platform game being successful. And we talked about Sony Corp Corporation investing one billion Epic Games, which will lead into the Unreal Engine, perhaps investments in Epic Game Store, and future things that happen to uh, Sony, such as them having games on their Steam, uh, such as game, uh, God of War and. Rise Zero Dawn. Will they have future games in the Epic Game Store? Who knows? But it really depends on the sales numbers. We talk about game sales and why we should look at it from a different aesthetic rather than going, "Wow, you you hit X, you you didn't hit over ten trillion. I guess you're not a good game," you know. And with that, we thank you for listening to our somewhat long-winded news video. Be sure to sub to the channel, hit the bell as well to be notified next time we go live. And uh, yeah, leave a comment below. Tell us if you uh, enjoy our critique and ideas when it comes to game sales or anything else. Or if you'd like to add to any of the news that we report on today, be sure to hit our link trees below with myself and Steph Scott and follow us on our various social medias from our Twitch, YouTube, and other projects we're working on. This is Get Silius and Steph Scott wishing you guys a good one, and we'll see you next time. See ya.